I am Matthew Preventure from Vail, Colorado. And we're going to be talking today about the suture lock implant for knee meniscal root repair. The suture lock comes in a kit that has everything you need to do to accomplish a meniscal root repair. There is the meniscal scorpion needle, a 2.4 millimeter cannulated drill, the nitinol passing wire, an eight millimeter by three centimeter passport cannula with two spacers, and the suture lock implant that comes prepackaged on a card. This is the suture lock implant that's actually been taken out of the card, but it's important to see here how the suture lock is going to work inside the knee in order to get a secure meniscal root repair. There are basically three parts of the suture lock implant. First is the part that's inside the knee where the sutures will do the meniscal root repair. The middle part is what is in the tibia to not only hold the repair securely right under the tibia cortex, but also have the sheath in the tibial tunnel. The third part are the sutures which do the conversion and actually pull the meniscus root repair sutures into the tibial sheath. The suture lock implant is very unique in that it has the bunching area as well as the splicing area to accommodate a secure repair sitting right under the tibial plateau, which is where the loop is on this suture sheath. This provides a very secure fixation right from the tibial plateau to the meniscus root. The sutures that come out the tibia and come outside the sheath are what will be utilized to finalize the repair, but there's also a suture to help set the sheath and make sure that it is well bunched up under the tibial plateau. This is a 3D model that shows how the suture lock implant works inside the knee and specifically the tibia. These are the repair limbs that will be utilized to repair the meniscus root. This is the tibia cortex in which the sheath will bunch up under and securely hold the meniscus root repair. This is the tibia cancellus bone tunnel in which the suture lock sheath is deployed. This represents the anterior aspect of the tibia where the sutures come out in order to do the meniscus repair, but also to set the sheath with the sheath setting suture. Once the suture lock implant is deployed from the knee joint into the tibia in a retrograde fashion, the sheath comes into the cancellous portion of the tibia bone with the four repair sutures still coming out of the knee joint portal. Once the suture lock sheath is just inside the tibia cancellus portion, you can get good tactile feedback to know that this has been put in the correct position. The suture lock sheath is then bunched up under the tibia using a combination of gentle back and forth motion on the four repair sutures plus the meniscal suture lock sheath deployment suture. This shows the unique nature of this implant as it is deployed underneath the tibia cortex. The first thing to do is to pull the four suture limbs and gently set the sheath. You can see that the sheath bunches up right under the tibia cortex and because of the unique nature of the design of the sheath does not come back through the tibia but securely holds right under the tibia cortex. In order to fully deploy the sheath and make sure you have secure fixation just prior to doing the meniscus repair, you take the meniscal suture lock sheath setting suture, which is this one right here with a loop, pull it back to ensure that the sheath is fully bunched up. You can see that the sheath bunches up, in order to make sure that the sheath is fully set up against the tibia cortex, you gently toggle this back and forth until it is fully deployed and cinched up securely right against the tibia cortex. The suture lock device is now ready for meniscus repair. After the diagnostic arthroscopy is complete, you can easily visualize here a lateral meniscus complete root tear. The scope is in the lateral portal in order to start the diagnostic and also initial preparation of the meniscus root. Here you can see the meniscus root tear, which is a very typical tear right off the footprint of the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus tibia. 
There are some fibers posteriorly, which you can also release depending on the chronicity of the tear in order to get this mobilized. I use a grasper just to assess the mobility of the posterior horn of the meniscus just prior to doing the repair and during the preparation to make sure that you have adequate mobility of the meniscus to come back to the root footprint. Preparation of the meniscal tibial footprint is one of the most important parts of the case in order to get good biologic healing response of this meniscus tissue. The arthroscope is now placed in the medial portal because the trajectory of the instruments to help with the preparation for this tear is going to be much easier. Now we're going to mark with the SJ50 where we want to come out anatomically with the meniscus root guide. The point-to-point -point guide is really nice because you have not only the point to put on the meniscus root footprint, but you also have a really good aiming guide on top of the meniscus guide. One of the things I've found helpful when setting the meniscus point-to-point -point guide is to just gently tap the 2.4 millimeter sheath with a mallet in order to fully set it up against the tibia cortex. This minimized deflection of the 2.4 millimeter drill pin. The meniscal point-to-point -point root guide is then removed at this point. One thing to keep in mind is that in hard tibia bone, occasionally the center drill tip may slightly become disengaged from the outer drill. If that's the case, you can redeploy the center drill tip and then redrill to make sure you get it fully deployed. In addition, it can also clean out any bone that may be at this orifice so that you can easily pass the nitinol wire. The nitinol wire is then inserted and grasped through the knee in the medial portal through the passport. Occasionally, anatomy and the tibial spine, you may have to switch portals with the scope in order to get the right trajectory to grab this. But in this case, we're able to get the nitinol wire uh, pretty easily through this cannula. We now want to remove the 2-4 guide pin. This can either be done just with your hand or facilitation with pliers. But you also want to make sure your assistant holds the nitinol wire so that it stays in position. The nitinol wire is then replaced with a fiber link suture. This will then be utilized to pass the suture lock implant. When passing the fiber link, you want to make sure that the loop stays outside the knee portal and that you pass the single strand down through the tibia. The suture lock implant is then ready for passing through the passport and then down into the tibial tunnel. Keep in mind that these are the repair sutures and this is what's going to be left coming out of the portal and we're going to pass this in a retrograde fashion down in the tibia. When I load the fiber link with the suture lock, you want to make sure that all of the sutures come through and that it comes just past the white end of the sheath. This is important for the suture lock to be able to deploy successfully and easily into the tibia. We're now going to deploy the suture lock into the knee. When we watch it come into the tunnel, you can see that the end of the splice and sheath is coming in and we just slowly deliver it into the tibial tunnel. Once the fiber link is out, I then pull the sutures so that we can manage deployment of the suture lock against the tibial plateau. So at this point, the suture lock sheath is almost fully deployed into the tibia. I generally have my assistant hold the scope at this point so I can manage deployment of the suture lock sheath. The key here is you want to just make sure that the mechanism that's going to be doing the bunching of the suture lock is just under the tibia. So this is the area that's going to be bunching up. I gently just roll my finger or pull my thumb down in a controlled fashion and you'll almost feel just a little tiny clunk as it comes into the tibia. We're now going to deploy and bunch up the sheath under the tibia. In order to do this effectively, we're going to gently grab the four sutures out of the passport. I just put my finger against the passport so it's a controlled pull, and I put my finger on the tibia so it's a controlled pull, and we're gently going to pull this back 
to set the sheath. You will feel a little bit of give and then the sutures will stop moving. Once that happens, I then do the setting suture, which comes out the tibia. This is the black and blue suture that has a loop on it, and you're going to grab this and pull this down in a toggle fashion. While controlling the sutures here, I'm just going to gently pull on this, and this sets the sheath. This doesn't take too long, but you just want to make sure it's fully set right up against the tibia cortex. And the last thing you want to check is that you pull all four of these sutures and you get no play or movement in those sutures and now you know the sheath is fully secured against the tibial plateau. A hemostat is utilized is so that the sutures don't accidentally deploy as you're managing the meniscus root repair. So now we have to manage the sutures and one of the things that's key is I just want to first pass a vertical suture so that we have a Mason Allen configuration in the back of this meniscus. This has been proven biomechanically to be superior when doing the meniscus root repair. So in order to do this, we're going to bring all the sutures that we're not using into the scope portal. So I'm going to temporarily bring the scope into the passport. The first blue suture is then brought through the lateral passport and will be loaded up on the scorpion to do the vertical repair. Now the first suture is going to be a vertical configuration. I always like looking at where the needle is going to come out and making sure that that first pass is really robust on the vertical suture configuration. In addition, we want to make sure we're not too far over here because that will not be enough robust tissue. We want to have enough tissue that holds the suture in nicely. I gently tilt the meniscus scorpion so that you can see the needle and look at where this comes out. One pearl is to just slowly squeeze this needle and watch the needle and suture come through the jaws. We now have the first vertical repair suture in place, but now we have to put another suture from top down in order to complete the vertical repair. In this case, we'll utilize the meniscus scorpion with a fiber link. This will then allow retrograde passage of the suture for the vertical repair. The fiber link suture is loaded into the meniscus scorpion and actually the link is loaded in so that you can pass it from bottom of the meniscus to top of the meniscus and then we're gonna retrograde down the suture through the link. So the right amount of tissue is grasped. Keeping in mind, you still need a reasonable bite to accomplish the vertical repair. You can always assess how the link looks after the repair. We're now gonna load the fiber link with the vertical repair suture and shuttle it into the meniscus. This will be the first step in the Mason Allen repair. The next step is then to convert this one so we get this suture out of the way. But one of the key things here is when we convert it is to not pull it all the way in so you can still put the meniscus scorpion under the meniscus and finish the Mason Allen repair. So we load that to the purple line right here. We're gonna take the hemostat off, off the sheath, so that you can then pull the blue and white to affect this conversion. So now I've got the blue and white. It's going to affect the conversion. The purple is right at the loop. We've confirmed that, and we're good to go. So we don't wanna pull it all the way down until we get the other horizontal suture to complete the Mason Allen in place. We're gonna reclamp the sheath coming out of the tibia with the hemostat so we don't inadvertently deploy it. We're now gonna do the horizontal which just entails one pass. Now one of the keys here is to come just off the edge of the vertical repair suture. And then slide it over and just look where that prior suture is so we get a good Mason Allen configuration. Here you can see the suture really nicely. We're going to be just off axis on that. So this will be a really nice horizontal suture. We're really going to twist just a little bit here with the scorpion so that you don't run into the condyle and slowly squeeze the needle to deploy the suture. We're just going to check the Mason Allen configuration. You can see we have this vertical component followed by the horizontal component. The next step is to convert the horizontal suture. We'll grab the remaining conversion stitch, load it, and then pass it through the sheath. 
we have to make sure that we take off the hemostat before we do the passing. I'm going to load this again to the purple and then deploy this. The black and white suture is the one that will be used to convert the horizontal limb. Now we have the horizontal and our vertical limbs ready to final tension. So the last step really is final tensioning. And with the Mason Allen configuration, I like doing sequential tensioning, starting first with the vertical blue stitch, and then with the white stitch, and then alternating gently back and forth until you affect the final repair. Alternating stitches, you can see how this holds it down. And there's our final meniscus root repair with a Mason Allen configuration. One last thing to do is just to probe it and assess the overall tension on the repair. You can see nicely that the meniscus has been reapproximated back to the root.